Hey everybody. Um, so, uh, yeah, you guys loved the uh, Dungeons and Lasers unboxing video. <laughs> um, I meant to get a, uh, a painting video out sooner before the Kickstarter ended it. Like it ended just like just the other day, this week. So, um, but I think you can still, you can still like late pledge if you're, you know, if you're interested in them. The, the new one looks really cool. It's like a, like a town builder kind of thing. But um, I, uh, I wanted to bang out my course set and I wanted to do it in kind of like a dungeon theme, you know, Dungeons and Lasers. So I did like a, a dank, uh, dark dungeon kind of theme. But I found a way to do this stuff like really quick, like an easy way to just bang out all of these things using um, like a stippling technique mostly. But anyways, yeah, let's uh, do some painting. All right, so I, um, I've got pretty much everything. I think that this is the whole core set from, um, my uh, my order, my I, I got one of the uh, fantasy core sets from uh, Dungeons and Lasers. So I'm just gonna work on this first. It's a lot of plastic. Um, so I like to use a, a a nail file, an emery board, to um, to get rid of the little connections. You know the the sprue nibs so I just I don't know if I'm gonna get this all done but you know I got them off the uh, I got them off the sprues at least so but I'm just gonna make a pile of ones that are ready to be uh, primed and then these guys oh man so much plastic <laughs> And this isn't even, this is just the core box, not even any of the, uh, the other wall sections and floors that I got. All right, that was a lot of uh, sanding. <laughs> so I'm mostly worried about um, like edges where things, um, things meet where they uh, butt up against each other like these um, these triangle edges you know and then also um, I want things to snap together because they have these cl clips you know that have tolerances and in fact so I <laughs> I kind of used up this um, this emery board, like there's not much left of it after getting through this uh, core box. So I think I'm going to use it as a paint stick. So I'm just going to glue, I'm going to sacrifice one of these little connector pieces and then I'm going to glue it on there and then I'm going to use it to, um, to uh, just make something that I can hang on to, to spray paint these with. So, yep. Made up my mind, that's what I'm doing. I can probably, you know, I might be able to salvage this piece later, but the, the Kickstarter came with like extra pieces, so. All right, and then that's gonna be my uh, painting stick for spray painting. Ooh, I didn't get all of these. Still some that need to be sanded. All right, so I uh, took everybody outside, I uh, hit them with some chalky gray. Um, I actually started with the Krylon stuff. I like this stuff way better. The Rust-Oleum stuff, it, um, I used to buy the Krylon when it would go on sale at um, Hobby Lobby. 
but the um, the Krylon stuff goes for like ten dollars a can. The Rust-Oleum stuff has a better nozzle. It has um, it dries quicker. It smells less. It's cheaper. It's just I think it's way better, and I use them pretty much interchangeably. But we've got that nice uh, kind of slate gray finish, which um, I just like as a base layer. But that worked pretty good, you know, got a, a big, <laughs> this is just the core box of, uh, of tiles. So anyways, I have some ideas about what I want to do with this stuff now. Um, so I am going to set up another little painting jig. Um, and I don't think that I'm going to airbrush. I think that I'm going to do um, <clears throat> a combination of like overbrushing and dry brushing. Alright, so I took everything outside, hit it with the spray paint. Um, so yeah, it's just going to be that really tough layer of paint, primer. It's going to stick to the plastic really well. Um, and then, you know, any other paint that I put on top of it is going to stick to that. So, um, I want to go for this kind of, like, iron-rich stone look for these, like a castle keep. So I'm going to be using, I'm going to use craft paints. Uh, got some folk art. <laughs> um, it's the cheap stuff, you know, this, like, if you're using your good, if you're using, like, your contrast paints to do this, you're crazy. Um, this stuff, it sells for, like, 85 cents a bottle or something. You know, like Hobby Lobby, um, Walmart, that kind of stuff, uh, Michaels. So, super, super cheap. And then when you have a ton of terrain like this, it, uh, it just... Uh, use a lot of paint. But I actually like this stuff. This um, folk art stuff. It's actually pretty good. I mean, it's definitely decent. So, um, I want to use, I want to do an overbrush. All right, so to do an overbrush, um, I actually, so I've got a couple things. I've got a, a, a sea sponge, and then I've got a, um, like a stencil brush. This is like a, for stippling. This is a really tough, like hog's hair, and it's just, it just takes a ton of abuse, like mashing into things. But you're actually gonna get some, like, some texture. So I'll take some of the paint out it's kind of like a dry brush, but it's different. Um, you're being, you know, a lot more rough than a dry brush. Um, you know, not being careful about mixing colors or anything. In fact, um, I want to just get in there. So, so the sea sponge, like, it actually makes some texture, you know? Um, Cause like, it, it, there, there isn't as much texture on these as, as you might like. <laughs> you might want more if you're doing like dry brushing and things like that. So this is gonna like create more of like a texture, rough like stone look. And then I wanna keep the contrast, I wanna keep the darks in between the stones for my shadows. So I'm just gonna kind of stipple on some, and then I'm, I'm working, you know, dark to light. So I wanna put on my lightest uh, stone colors last. But I'm, you know, I, I'm trying to get like a uh, sort of iron rich stone. So when, when the, in medieval times, when they would build a, a castle, they would use the, uh, iron rich kind of stone to, to, to make like the walls and the uh the floors and things like that because it was stronger 
so it would be like more more red and dark so that's kind of the look that I'm going for is uh, red reddish kind of iron rich stone and then you know if I, I can use this like a dry brush too I just work some of it off and then you know put some on that top layer but this isn't ideal for a dry brush I would I would rather use like a, a makeup brush it has those super soft bristles so just work some of it off and then you know get some of that top texture but you know be be sparing with your uh, your lightest highlights you don't want everything to be light you want you want your highlights to stand out so go easy with the lightest colors you know make it um, make that your lightest highlights so I think it shows up a little bit better on like this stone areas here because it's just one big chunk of stone so you can see how this like sort of creates texture where there isn't any like it looks like texture and then you know if I stipple on the, the different colors it looks like a much more natural kind of looking stone because you know stone isn't all one color it isn't all charcoal gray and it's not you know light gray either so you want to create that variation and then come in with the, the highlights the you know things that you want to stand out maybe even pick out some stones try and keep my highlights on the walls towards the tops of the walls because that's where the most of the light would be hitting it's all about layers layers of color <laughs> all right so that's starting to look like how I want it um, the only thing is that I want, I think I want some even lighter highlights. Sorry, the, the washer dryer, you know, it's right next to the art studio. So I'm just going to come in and kind of stipple in some, uh, some highlights in areas. I just want some, some light stones, you know, to go along with, like I want my dark uh, little crevasses, crevasses, crevices, um, and then uh, I just want, I want some things to be highlighted, some, some like uh, highest highlights to be that lighter color to kind of stand out. And I also want to create some, I want to break things up so that, you know, the eye sort of moves around a little bit. Create some interest. So I'm just, yeah, I'm just stippling, you know, because I want to keep that kind of texture and then even, even mixing some paint in the brush. Not really being careful about mixing paint. So this is a simple palette. It's a really simple palette, but it's a palette. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I was going for. 
And I am trying to keep it simple because, you know, I mean, there's a ton of this stuff to paint. <laughs> I want to keep a simple palette that I can easily reproduce, but has a cool look. And I can do this with the makeup brush too, like, it has a little bit softer look. You don't see like the bristles as much, but it does have that overbrushed kind of stippled look. All right, so <clears throat> um, this is the look that I'm going for. So the colors that I used, and like, of course you don't, you don't need to use these specific brands of craft paint, but just in case you're curious, um, I've got some terracotta, folk art, um, iced coffee, folk art, prairie sage, and then some of this light mocha color, apple barrel. <laughs> um, but the, I, yeah, I, I do, I really like this, um, I'm in love with this kind of overbrushing, like stippling thing. Uh, it's just such an easy way to create like cool looking texture where there is none, you know. And then it totally breaks things up like having the, just the different colored stones so that it's not all like one just monotone thing. Um, so now, before the next step, I'm just going to varnish everything and hit everything with some dull coat just to seal it down. And yeah, once again, I'm going to take everything outside to do that. Alright, so... I uh, took everything outside, hit it with some uh, clear coat, and one thing, you know, so I, I like it, um, one thing that I notice is that they look like flesh tones, um, and you know, like earth tones are flesh tones and vice versa, but uh, really digging like the, the stippling effect, but there's some things I want to try. So I've got some of this um, pumice stuff and um, all this is is just it's a it's a medium but it's um, really finely ground up uh, stone you know pumice and then it's in acrylic medium so uh, I just want to try and like smear some of this stuff into the cracks and see how that looks like there's some uh, there's some spots where I have like boo-boos, you know, where I messed up with my paint job. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of shove it down in there. And I'm not gonna do this everywhere, uh, just in some places. But then I'm just gonna kind of use my finger and get a little bit wet. Just kind of smear it around. But this is part of the reason why I wanted to seal everything down was because uh, I don't want any of the paint to like come up or anything. Like the craft paints are great. They're, you know, they're dirt cheap. They're like 50 cents, 80 cents a bottle or two, but they have lousy coverage. And then they just, um, if anything is going to come up from being handled, it's going to be the craft paints. So I just want to put some of this stuff in some spots, like not everywhere. Just want to kind of break things up. Cover up mistakes and things like that.
All right, so went around and did the um, the pumice paste all around. Um, I like, you know, I like the look. It's um, it's still drying. It's like it's a little tiny bit glossy right now. So I was thinking, I kind of want to do something. Maybe I'm going to do a wash. Of, uh, I'm gonna make a really, really watered down um, just a green, like to do um, <clears throat> uh, like moss, mossy stuff, loamy, mossy dungeon stuff. So I'm just gonna make a really, really watered down like more than two parts water or like two to one paint two parts water one part paint and then I'm gonna put that on the spots where it's like light you know I'm just gonna wipe that off too I want it to have that kind of like dirty, dingy dungeon feel. She had a little more water to that. Wanted to make it look like there's some like green, weird like lichen stuff kind of growing on things. Some uh, picker moss, what have you. Because this is a little too light. So I want to kind of tone that down a little bit. So everything is dry and nothing looks glossy, which is good. Um, I was a little bit worried about some of the, uh, the golden uh, texture paste stuff drying a little bit glossy because it's, you know, grout is not glossy at all. Um, <clears throat> sometimes like golden stuff, their, uh, their binder, their acrylic is a little bit glossy. So anyways, <clears throat> I can think of a couple more things to do with these, but I am trying to keep this paint job kind of simple. Um, just so that I can repeat it easily and, you know, bang out like all of the terrain tiles like this. So anyways, I will post some uh, turnaround pictures. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys, take care.